have you ever thought about death? Or are you one of these people who always avoids thinking about death? You sort of know it's there, but you don't discuss it. It's not very nice. Have you ever realized it's the one experience that every one of us will go through? You, me, everybody? Good morning. I want to share with you this morning something that some of you may consider a rather strange subject. The title is The Death of a Christian Believer. Oh, you say, Richard, I really don't talk about death. Well, I don't all the time. But it so happens a few weeks ago, one of the men who was a trustee when we began Jesus Focus Ministry died rather suddenly. And two weeks later, we had a memorial service in our Friday night service. And I want to share with you some of the thoughts I shared with our friends that night. I think it's very vital that we as Christians understand our place in death. You know what happens. The world tries to avoid death, which you can't. And when death comes, the world tries to dress it up. That's why we have viewings. Also, it makes a lot of money for certain people. But that's a side issue but they dress up a body that's not even there. The person has already left, and so we view a body. I cannot believe why. If you stop and think about it, why would you look at something that's empty? It's an empty tent. The real person has already gone on. But more than that, when we come to the death of a Christian believer, Know this in your heart, and I said it earlier in the week in a different context. You can never mourn for the one who's gone if they know Christ. They've just entered into the fullness of their Lord. They've just received everything that was theirs. All the joy and the love and the peace that they knew here on earth has now become perfect for them. They have a completed life in Christ. They couldn't be better off. The sorrow... The hurt, the loss, is for those who are left behind. And it is natural and right for a grieving there. And if we don't, emotionally we can be upset. But what I want you to notice is the tremendous life and resurrection and joy that there is in the death of a believer. First of all, there, the Lord Jesus has made preparation for us. Listen to what he says in John 14 and verse 2. He's speaking to the to the disciples, and he says to them, I am going there to prepare a place for you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. A lot of us get hung up right away. What sort of place will he prepare? Who cares? If we're going to be there, why worry as to what it's going to be like? You're going to be with Jesus. Also, he says in a different way that he'll prepare us before we get there. We find this in John 14 and verse 16 when Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit. He says, If you love me, you will obey my commands. And then I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter, a paracletos, to be with you forever. Jesus says, The Father will give you another one just like me. Now let me ask you something. Do you really know the work of the Holy Spirit in your life? Is he there to produce his fruit? Is he in control of your life? As you drive into work this morning as a Christian, is it the Holy Spirit directing you? Is it the Holy Spirit guiding you today? Are you going to do it or is he going to do it through you? That's a total difference. It was some weeks ago. I was driving to our Monday afternoon Bible study and I was so tired. And it was only noon, about one o'clock. I said, Lord, this is crazy. I'm so tired, I'm too tired to go. I said, I'm going to go into that Bible study, and I'll be there, but you're going to do it. And you're going to do it by your Holy Spirit who's within me. Shall I tell you a secret? That was the best Monday afternoon Bible study we'd had for weeks. I said, Lord, I like it. I'm going to do this every time. Whenever I do anything for you, Lord, I'm going to go and you're going to do it. What a difference. I feel the difference. I know the difference. The Holy Spirit takes over. Do you know abundant life? Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Is your life full? Is your life satisfying? Is your life complete in Jesus Christ as you go to work on this Friday? 
Is it really? That's what Jesus wants. Not that you're going to have abundant life when you die. Yes, you will. But what about now? He's preparing you for that. Are you allowing him to have you conformed into the image of Jesus Christ? You see, there are a lot of evangelical Christians who really think we've been saved so that our sins could be washed away. Oh, no, that's only the start. It's great that our sins have gone. It is fantastic that we've been forgiven. I couldn't agree with you more, but that's only the beginning. You have been saved so that you can be conformed to the likeness of Jesus Christ so that people in your home and people at work and people around you can see what Jesus is like. Do they? Is that true? Is that what they're seeing in you, friend? Because if they're not, you're missing it. Every one of us, who belongs to Jesus Christ, should be conformed to the likeness of Jesus. Jesus says something else to us in John 14. He says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. I will come again and receive you unto myself. Our days are numbered by the Lord our God, and one day he's going to call us home. And friend, the day he calls you home, you're going to leave this earth. And don't bother to argue about it. Your days are numbered by the Lord. And when you come to death, and this to me is the fantastic fact, when we come to death as a Christian, the Lord Jesus Christ, who dwells within us by his Holy Spirit, takes us to the point of death. He goes through death with us, and he meets us on the other side in the place he's prepared for us. Now think about what I've just said. If you live very closely with someone, if you're very close to your husband or wife, you spend all your lives together, friend, know this, when you come to death, you are totally on your own. That's an experience you can't go through with anyone except Jesus. And if Jesus is yours, he's going to go through it with you. That, to me, is fabulous. You do not need to fear death as a Christian because Jesus will be there Jesus will go through it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. David said it before Jesus came. He had a faith in God that was beautiful. But for those of us who know Christ, we have the Holy Spirit within us, and friend, we are going to go through this with him. You will not be alone. But if you're without Christ, friend, you haven't got a hope in the world. Then there's a promise of our Lord Jesus about death to every Christian believer. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Now here's the assurance. You believe in Jesus, you will live. You believe in Jesus, you will live. No question. So you don't even need to debate it. Christ has become your life. The Holy Spirit, who is Jesus, who is the Father, lives within you. And you have all you need in Him. Now, you will die physically. You can't miss that. We've said this week, because sin came into the world, then straight away, death came into the world. Sin brought corruption. Sin brought mortality to the human race. You will die physically but you will live on spiritually. Your spirit is alive forever and ever because the Holy Spirit lives within you. You have become eternal in your spirit. You will go on living. And you will live in spirit and in soul. You have Jesus Christ there. You have God. You've become eternal. And whatever happens to you in any experience of life, sickness, failure, loss of your home, Nothing. No one can ever pluck you out of the hand of the Lord your God once you're his. Nothing can. No one can. No experience. You're his. And you were in him before the foundation of the world. Listen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. For God chose you in Jesus Christ before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Did you hear that? You were chosen then, when you were saved, when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you just put the clutch in and you put it into gear 
everything that had been decided for you before the foundation of the world. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? God chose you before the foundation of the world. Now, if you're into a fundamentalist type of Christianity, you talk about eternal security, you've got it. Read over Ephesians 1.4. You've had it since the foundation of the world. Once Christ became your Savior, all that went into action. One other thing. The purpose of our Lord in having us in heaven. Have you thought of this? Why on earth does God want us in heaven? Why? Why does he want us there with him? First of all, we know it's not because any of us deserve it. Absolutely not. Nor can you say, well, I'm not worthy because none of us are worthy. It is purely God's love. God's grace in Jesus Christ. We can love our Heavenly Father totally, completely, and in purity forever and ever. That's what heaven's about. More than that, we can be there to worship Him, serve Him in a pure worship, singing His praises forever and ever. We can fellowship with Him. You remember it says that He walked in the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day, we will have that close fellowship with our God forever and ever. But there's one other thing. God wants you with him in heaven. I think we sometimes forget this. We make God remote, and he really isn't. God is a loving heavenly Father, and he can't wait to have you in heaven with him. And it's going to be the greatest day, and he's going to welcome you, rather like the prodigal son with his father. What happened? Father saw him, Father ran, put his arms around him, just hugged him. That's what it's going to be like to return to our Heavenly Father. God wants us with him in his presence. And when I say that, he wants every human being. The snag is, not every human being wants to be with him. And they turn against him, and they do their own thing. And that's when we're into sin. Those of us who found him in and through Jesus Christ, he wants us with him forever and ever. You remember what Jesus said? He wants us to share his glory. He wants us to see his glory. It's all there in John chapter 17. He wants us to be with him forever and ever. That's what heaven is all about. The death of the Christian believer is great. In fact, the greatest thing you can do after accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, is to die. Now that sounds ridiculous. The world says, Richard, that's bonkers. I say, no, that's great. Because when that happens, I'm going to enter into the fullness of my Lord Jesus Christ. For the first time, I'm going to know him as he is. I'm going to be with my Heavenly Father. I'm going to be part of the family of God. Isn't that great? Great.